Thank you for joining us for this week's report. And now, here are the news highlights for the week. In our top story, the presidents of the Marshall Islands, Federated States of Micronesia, and Palau gathered in Majuro for the 12th Annual President's Summit. At the summit, the heads of state agreed to pursue a debt swap strategy for climate change mitigation, together with exploring ocean thermal energy conversion, OTEC, as key measures to combat the global carbon emissions problem that is threatening these nations with rising seas. The debt swap strategy is becoming widely used in climate change mitigation, allowing for developing countries to trade their debts for environmental preservation. We cannot afford delays in climate change action, said Marshall Islands President Christopher Loyak on Thursday, who was joined by Palau President Johnson Toribiong and Federated States of Micronesia President Emmanuel Mori. The communique signed on Thursday, July 5th by the three presidents agreed to collaborate on the debt swap proposal and to participate in a workshop in the Marshall Islands scheduled for October that is being facilitated by the Nature Conservancy. The presidents also discussed air service opportunities with Nauru's Our Airline and Honolulu-based Hawaiian Airlines. They also called for a meeting with high-level officials in United Airlines which has recently taken over service connecting the Micronesia area with Guam and Hawaii through its merger with Continental Airlines, amongst other issues. The Palau national government may need to lay off employees and find other means to keep the government afloat until the supplemental budget is passed, according to a directive from the vice president. Earlier in the week, the Ministry of Health asked for the President's assistance in seeking funding for essential drugs and medical supplies, as the Ministry's requisition has been sitting in the Ministry of Finance for weeks waiting for approval. In addition, the Bureau of Public Works asked for funding to purchase chemical supplies for water treatment and funding to continue other services. With OEK concerns regarding overexpenditures, the President instructed the Ministry of Finance and Budget Planning Director Dennis Oilo to observe strict austerity measures. However, on July 3rd, the President directed Oilo to immediately pay the MOH's RQ. According to the Director Rungelbai of the Public Works, on Friday, July 6th, they received some funding to cover chemical supplies for two weeks. And according to the hospital's administrator, the MOH's RQs are being worked out by the finance ministry. And in related news, here's Rolinda with the breakdown of the 2012 supplemental budget. On Monday, July 2, 2012, Vice President Karai Mario instructed all ministers and directors of the national government to begin formulating plans to operate the ministries and bureaus at the reduced level until the 2012 bud supplemental budget is passed or until the next fiscal year. According to the Vice President's letter, within the next few weeks, many of the ministries and bureaus will run out of money to pay for salaries, wages, and expenses. He further instructed each ministry to identif identify which employees will have to be laid off and which employees can continue services at a reduced level until funds become available. This week, the House Committee on Ways and Means held a series of oversight hearings with all the ministries and some government agencies. The review of the supplemental budget shows increases of the 2012 fiscal year across the board for the President's office and the ministries. Among the ministries, the highest increase is in the Ministry of Public Infrastructure, Industries and Commerce at $1.2 million, followed by the Ministry of Health at $570,000, then the Ministry of Finance at $530,000. In total, the executive branch is seeking appropriation of $3.5 million. Other expenditures for various government agencies and boards include $25,000 for the Ngartmal Free Trade Zone and $40,000 for Pliliu and Angar boats, among other things. Additional funding includes $261,000 for court judgments against the Republic, $175,000 to the Pacific Arts Festival, although the delegation has already left, and $325,000 for cost of living for government employees. Two riders are also included in the supplemental budget. The first is for over-expenditures over from 2011 in an undisclosed amount, which would be retroactively authorized, meaning that no matter what they are and for what amount, they are authorized expenditures. 
However, this is the sticking point for the House of Delegates who is asking the Ministry of Finance for accounting documents to show how the unappropriated expenditures were spent. These documents requested include a breakdown of personnel and salaries in the executive branch, which the Ministry of Finance to date has not provided. Another item included on the supplemental budget is to repel Section 761, Title 41 of the law entirely. This is the earnings test for Social Security recipients. Here's Greg Niermang, former Social Security Administrator, with more details. Yeah, earnings test, uh, I'm no, I give, I'm no effective was uh, 2007. And we're part of our overall plan, and we also have no increase of benefits and more other than Social Security. Uh, uh, benefits are very good. Say, if you want to say, I will be 60, I will go to work full time, I can fully employ it. I will give you a benefit, and I will retire. In other words, uh, uh, individuals who are still gainfully employed uh, will have their benefits reduced to the uh, formula uh, $1 for every $3 of earnings. เอ่อรู้เลยมองมองเรียกว่ามองเรียกว่าเรียกว่าเรียกว่าเรียกว่าเรียกว่าเรียกว่าเรียกว่าเรียกว่าเรียกว่าเรียกว่าเรียกว่
a teenager who was accused in the stabbing death and attack of Virginia Ventura Gallo last year. Although the case is still sealed, Meese is likely facing first-degree murder charges, related charge of assault and battery with a dangerous weapon, and others. In the meantime, the court has issued summons for jury duty where the trial division, in consultation with the lawyers involved in the case, are expected to impanel six jurors and two alternate jurors. In this case, Assistant Attorney General Victoria Rowe represents the Republic, while Attorney Siegfried Nakamura represents the defendant. Palau made history when the country's Rock Island Southern Lagoon was inscribed in UNESCO's World Heritage List this week. According to the director of the Bureau of Arts and Culture, Palau has been working on inscribing the site to the coveted list for many years. Fortunately, during the recent World Heritage Committee session, Palau's site was inscribed as a mixed natural and cultural site. The Rock Island Southern Lagoon is Palau's first property to be inscribed on the list, and other Pacific Island countries are also on the list, including the Marshall Islands Bikini Atoll and Kiribati's Phoenix Island protected areas. The East-West Center in Hawaii, which is supported by the U.S. Department of State's Bureau of Democracy, Human Rights and Labor, invited PICRIC CEO and presidential candidate Sandra Sumang Perintosi as a member of the election observation team for the East Timor general parliamentary elections. East Timor, a new sovereign country, requested international observation during the election, which prompted countries to dispatch teams of observers for the July 2nd election. South Korea, Philippines, Papua New Guinea, and other countries all sent an observation team for the country's elections. In 2010, Perantosi and Tuti Chilton of PCC were part of the U.S. East-West Center observation team to the general parliamentary elections in the Solomon Islands. On July 27, 2012, Delta Airlines top management for the Asia region visited Palau at the invitation of the Palau Tourism Association to present their future plans for Palau. Jeff Bernier, the Managing Director for Asia Pacific, proclaimed Delta's commitment to Palau and announced that Delta has gone from seasonal service in Palau to all-year-round service three times every week. Delta boasts the highest profit margins of any international airline, exceeding both United Airlines and U.S. Airways. Delta has seen a 30% growth in the Asian market over the past three years and will continue to invest in this region. They are improving their services to include flatbed seats in business class and Wi-Fi on all international flights by 2013. On Tuesday, July 2nd, the 11th Festival of Pacific Arts Grand Opening Ceremony was held in Aniara, Solomon Islands, with delegations from 20 Pacific Island countries that marched through Lawson Tama Stadium to greet an audience of thousands. A fleet of seven traditional canoes that's been traveling all over the Pacific also arrived over the weekend to join the festival. Despite all the excitement and festival buzz, controversy surfaced after many felt that the opening ceremony MC's attempt at making humorous remarks were in bad taste. Some, however, such as the head of the New Zealand delegation, disagreed and said in a Solomon Star article that it was natural Pacific humor and that they were there to share cultures, cultural humors, and to learn from each other, and that, would it, that it was part of the uniqueness of this festival. Other criticisms also rose over the failure of the organizing committee to provide an official program to relevant dignitaries in order to follow the activities lined up for the two-week event. Since 1972, the Festival of Pacific Arts has brought together 27 independent Pacific nations to a different host country every four years. Unfortunately, countries not participating this year include the Cook Islands, the Federated States of Micronesia, CNMI, Wallace and Fatuna, Tonga, and Tuvalu. The 12th festival will be hosted by Guam in 2016, and Hawaii has officially presented its bid to host the 13th Festival of Pacific Arts in 2020. And now, here's Rolinda with this week's election update. Now with your weekly election update, something unique is happening this election season that has never been reported to take place in the history of Palau's elections. 
A group of candidates running for the Olbira Glulao are reportedly coming together, committing to the same causes. Santi Asanuma, who is the spokesperson for the group called Palau People's Committee Movement, explains. El Alcil se aquí nara adra Palau People's Committee Movement angara obisra election commission el el meldar sra sel ngi awal el dodaira ule ar adra People's Committee am a ludul kagros el adel mal kagros a ai kagi dele klegegen tira tora boai ma a government ma politics ma di adra blur belau Aquí un moral lo hace a Tial Lolvira Glulao a Togunia Senet, a Girel Lulsumul Adma, a Trigel Tiria, a Tmol, a Claudinger Tira Blur Belao, a Girel Nar Alcel, el Mo Tabalel, Mal Ubetamo Telgibra, a Ungil, el Dorodle, MCC, el Government. El Alcil se a Akmo Oldar San Clira, a Mr. Allen Sid. Ma Mr. Moses Ludong, ma a Mr. Dr. Caleb Otto, ma a Dilme Olgrila, Moe Gurula, a petition in el mail, en Maria Gelguk Pevira petition in Ildiga, ma al Menditir Gaigidia, a Adertial Palau People's Committee Movement. In other election news, Greg Nirmang, who has declared to run for the Senate, is now pledging to implement a new salary structure if elected to office. Here's Greg with more about that pledge. Um, Also this week, Alfonso Diaz, Gail Nirmidol, and Malip Matul filed their nominating petition at the election office for the Senate. For the House of Delegates this week, Brian Malayre for Malrayok, Marhen's mother and for Ngarlong, 
Rabluud Kasole for Ngartmau and Jonathan Isal for Pliliu also filed their nominating petitions. Another, another election-related event this week, President candidate Tamir Mangasaw Jr. and hundreds of his supporters officially opened his new headquarters in Madalahi. In other election news, Sandra Sumang Pirantosi, presidential candidate who recently held a rally in Guam, has officially filed her petition at the election office. According to the election office, president and vice president candidates are required to obtain 500 signatures for their petition. Senator Gamsek Chin also held a brief press conference at the Landmark Hotel this week regarding his candidacy for the Senate this upcoming election. As of today, there are a total of 33 days left until the closing of nominating petition and less than five months is left until the election day. Candidates are now frequently appearing on television, radio and newspaper in around town seeking support. OTV will continue updating viewers on election-related news and events as we continue to count down the days until Election Day on November 6th. You can also visit www.oceaniatv.net for more updates. Rolinda Jonathan for OTV. Thank you, Ro. And now here's the Yallop of PCS with this week's environmental news. Sulang so Evler, a Palau Conservation Society, am la at 2011 annual report. Ngidil member el soal akapi asab el elom kadong maluup ang mera PCS ang uha kapi electronic format el ngara CD. Direct el sub el mora members la PCS el kmo. Ang arel abib newsletter ramay majun am la tuod. A other member la PCS el soal akapi asab el el may maluup ang elom kadong el mera PCS la tengwa el 4883993 el gire lang liwale la klokleil. El atiang ato gubet sa sub na el mora roku il ngaya sa el ngal garbela ul pmo mora el mera youth for conservation concert our summer interns ra palau conservation society amru ra youth for conservation concert el morngi ra bet lehem parga ra Friday el July 13th matirga gid our youth summer interns ra PCS el invite the OIs el mora roku il youth at the Goyra Conservation or Belau, El Girel Tial Youth for Conservation Concert. Healthy ecosystems, healthy communities. Masigyo ang malingit. Species diversity. A biodiversity alu gelas langar. A welas alit. Youth for Conservation Concert. Youth for Conservation Concert! Ay kikip, Ay kaya tayo ra conservation el mlamdu, mamay men tayo ra youth for conservation concert el mangitakla, alit takla lawel, malit takla labip marangal ka, maungil klum el malisi a conservation ra balwader belaw. Amo master of ceremony amral isel el run diesel, amo mangitakla at tirige lungila iklir el Neil Fisher, ma Kimi Weki. Iwet the May, ma Iwang Blesam, ma Lemu Telbevir Ralula Baungil Ayukla. Ngarangi ya otrulela tiget el maldi klim el klug at talad. Ma May memorreng sa aungil togoy el lologoy tirgal ngayasaka. May rapit lehen par gara July 13th, ra 9 a.m. el mora 4 p.m. Ebom teloy ra ngayasaka rbelaw, lo gansar telgire la togoy ra conservation rbelaw. Madagot mal masaw la, Thank you, Yalop. Cyber scamming and 2012 Olympic updates all after this short break. Stay tuned. If you're interested in creating television, we may have the job for you. OTV is looking for future TV producers across Micronesia to shoot and edit video segments for OTV. We will be equipping and training one producer from each of these islands. 
Pohnpei, Chu, Yap, Kosrai, and Majuro. After training, the new producers will be paid to make weekly stories for OTV. Candidates should be reliable, creative, have good English skills, be computer literate, and enjoy diverse challenges. To apply, visit us at www.oceaniatv.net or send us an email to news at oceaniatv.net. The Sustainable Land Management Project presents a message on how we can conserve our water. Our water is a precious resource that we can't take for granted. Water leaks are a big source of waste in our country. Even small leaks from our toilets, our faucets, and hoses all add up. Soon we will see a dramatic decrease in our water levels which could affect our supply of drinking water. So be mindful of your water use and fix leaks. Or turn off your water when it's not in use. We can all do our part to maintain a sustainable environment in Palau. The Sustainable Land Management Project. Be a part of the solution. The world is on the web, and you should be too. More people than ever are using the web for their primary source of information about tourism, education, fundraising, politics, shopping, and so much more. Roland Productions offers professional web services for both the startup and established business. We offer professional web design, web hosting, content management, and more. We don't just build websites, we create a successful web presence to increase your business. For more information, call Roland Productions at 488-1838 or learn more at onepacificmedia.com. Strive for 25, pass it on. 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 Welcome back. The more people are dependent on technology, particularly computers and the internet, both for personal and professional purposes, the more people are susceptible to become victims of cybercrime. Cybercrime is a global problem and the Pacific region is vulnerable to its threat according to the Secretariat of the Pacific Community. Areas of, of concern involving cybercrime include child pornography, cyberbullying, and theft of money by stealing bank account numbers and even credit card details. In Tonga, legislation has been established making the use of information and communication technology for illegal purposes as a criminal offense. Other Pacific countries are also beginning to address cyber threat. However, according to SPC's Pacific ICT Outreach Program, the legislations do not appear to be sufficient to effectively block illegal activities. Amelia Earhart was the first woman to ever fly across the Atlantic Ocean and the first woman to attempt to fly around the world in 1937. She disappeared in the Pacific between New Guinea and Howland Island, and 75 years later, fascination with her life, career, and disappearance continues to this day. 
the International Group for Historic Aircraft Recovery departed from Hawaii for Niku Maroro Island in Kiribati this week in a bid to establish whether Earhart might have survived the apparent crash of her aircraft. The $2.2 million expedition will use state-of-the-art technology, including a multi-beam sonar to map the ocean floor. A cargo ship carrying the equipment and a crew of about 20 scientists departed Hawaii to explore over 10 days both the island and an underwater reef slope at the west end of the island. A Marshallese man accused of stabbing his girlfriend to death was arraigned on one count of murder at Oregon's county court on Monday, June 25th. Luhar Filippo was witnessed by at least two neighbors of stabbing his 31-year-old girlfriend, Kiorinta Edmond, on the lawn in front of their apartment complex over the weekend. According to court records, the victim appeared to have stab wounds to the chest and the upper torso. She was reportedly non-responsive except for a slight gurgling sound when officers were called to the scene. When investigators went inside the couple's apartment after the murder, they found a chair with what appeared to be stab and slash marks and a knife in the sink that appeared to have blood on it. Several hours before the tragic attack took place, police officers had been dispatched to the apartment complex where they questioned the victim about a hit-and-run incident that Filippo may have been involved in. However, the victim did not mention anything about being in danger. Diabetes in the Marshall Islands has reached epidemic levels, according to data from the country's Ministry of Health. Blood screening conducted the local Diabetes Wellness Center showed that 79% of senior citizens who participated had blood sugar levels at about 200, confirming that they have diabetes. The epidemic is further confirmed by the ministry's quarterly report to the U.S., where it describes diabetes as the number one cause of death or hospital admissions. The report further highlighted that diabetes also accounts for more than 50% of the ministry's budget. Diabetes is also causing the number of other diseases in the country to rise. According to reports, 90% of all patients who relapse from tuberculosis, commonly known as TB, are diabetic patients. Co-infection of TB and diabetes is also increasing in population. And a more serious and pressing concern is that the younger generation is now also being diagnosed. In a recent CNN article by Todd Leopold, which explores America's shortcomings, you might be surprised to learn that America has lost its place as number one in the world in all categories. America is seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in science, 49th in life expectancy, 178th in infant mortality, third in median household, household income, number four in labor force, and number four in exports. Today, Finland is regularly ranked as having the best education system in the world, and New Zealand ranks number one in the world for ease of starting a business. Germany ranks as the world's leading exporter. And now it's time for Pickrick's monthly update. Ali ngangkleka uli also wrong with research assistant at Palau International Corvive Center. Dal mo mesarngi ay sa PICRC lalong yung wizel buil. Ilgirel amlat mo kalurior logi wa capacity enhancement project. Ilgirel om om omong garngel ama om suve la maranda. Mangram mga mangare em suve maranda ma almol. Amaran the cloud to tell and mere other way low, my girl baby Rabalu, the Diwa El Tel Maklil Relabalwat. I got Maran the Sab El Matamal, Mal Ubeng Math, Lintera Kle the Gida Ada Ul. I got Marine Protected Areas, Amla Optoisa the Sail at Magalo Rior, and Mangario Melimot Mok Legal Resources Regi. The Omongarangel, Mom Sube, Laigan Marangil Blul, Ado Spe El Mongil, El Mare, and Mangario Meladabez. Ngarasep Cream. Sera Rara 2009, Raonge Wizel Bui, Le Palau International Corrupt Center, Machaiga, Amil Ali Seluriol, Lurior, El Domrodon in the Capacity Enhancement Project for Corrupt Monitoring, El Malamol, Mel Edel Rak, Emlom Melisi, Rapi ICRC, El Morni Adu Urni, El Mangare Mesu, Mot Mok Legal MPAs, Mangara Milgat Moklam. 
milgat mok la taletay la laurior lolduva a osengel om subel magaramle la MPA. PICRC am lo omud le merit la troy al moigal dim lang aringil MPA ngirel ger. Tamlong mil taklawal MPA el moringa laurior ringin. Mangaringi abil conservation area lang ar along ngamay conservation area ngi wal ilak kalbalu lang ar tmau matrulo conservation area ra abalu ra abliliu. Mlogat mo kla monitoring plan lo tergo kla mukter ra omangar om subel o lang alel matretel lo om sub. Etegi del milgat mo kla monitoring plan amil ngay kangeringi. Mlaringi osis akle lo gire lo omangar mo om subel mo ra adra PICRC mar mangar ay gilewang el MPA ni amlingilt. O mangar mo om sub o lamu el el moringi ay gil gigi de klawang el MPA ra blue belau. O mangar mo om sub ay dire galul ber galmo ra baby ra MPA sa el ngar ablu ra ra FSM ma ra Marshall Islands logi wa klang sa Seoul West ay gil MPA tir. Mlagat mo kladay ra base el bolol si sa moringi ay gil roguil toy mo ur el mlangay mong sabi ay dalgo kol top de ospe. Milgat mo kla sa monitoring protocol el toy belaweng wa sa ngulul om sub ma om mangar. Tel monitoring protocol a mo garbi la tele tele ma o tute la uriora al sa la NPA. A monitoring ang aringa erul ba dengel. Mi sosyo ekonomig ma ecological monitoring lul di mo kong ngay diesel ma temel om sub scale abasyo o retel ma tele tele om sub ma om mangar a NPA. Tel monitoring protocol Algiling er ngi a Ministry of National Resource Environment at Tourism ra blue belau. Umlom kat mo klaw ngi dalong dalong ra dalong le la PICRC mabebir ra alad ra balwas. May gil blue ra alsela Micronesia Challenge mabebir ra tagaw ko al alad ra uriyor. Tilaw da isel la uriyor el mal kat mo klaw ngi wagaro sel di di la ice. Tilaw da Reef Talk Newsletter umlom ngi a website a Sep Cream. Tilo ba ako dahil maklim ang luo sa babayar ang isel teluryo at chayga website. Mlaringi om sodel maluok ang siyasing ang lodar sa mga ongdib ang mlaringi al sa labalu may kelbelaw may babir rablu rablu laad. May isel a PICRC rabi kalbuy lalul mo or sa ongelon malbuy lal mora may kronisya rogi. May luo sa tilo ba ako dahil arigal sa simbong or belaw. Dira kami ng gatmok leto ba klawang ang brochure sa gilid tertoy. Tilo ba isa lang ang MPA sa kmo. Mula mo ring report monitoring results sa igal klawang ang MPA. Igal results sa igal MPA yabol report at tel mal mail International Coral Reef Symposium mo ring ra Australia at July 2012. Tilo ba milro sa selo ul omsu ma omongara MPA al mo ang national, regional, ma international meetings. Lobanggel la Palau Conservation Consortium, ma MC Measures Group, Ramsar Fifth Oceania Regional Meeting, Coral State Legislators, Coral State Traditional Leaders, ma communities of four MPA states. Dimle gagi da ay sa PICRC el albuy lo kumal masulang magugtara time. Thank you, Pickrick. This week, American citizens across the globe celebrated their 236th independence. In Palau, celebrations also took place. American expatriates celebrated the 236th birthday of the United States on July 4th. Distinguished guests gathered on the USS Benfold on a rainy evening in the Coral Harbor. U.S. Ambassador Helen Reed Rowe acknowledged the close ties between the U.S. and Palau through the Compact of Free Association and then announced a U.S. contribution of $150,000 to cleared ground demining to assist in the removal of unexploded ordnance in Palau. The missile destroyer on which the ceremony took place was named after Edward Clyde Benfold, who gave his life at the age of 21 during the Korean War. Hospital corpsman Benfold was treating the wounded when two grenades landed near him and injured men. Picking up a grenade in each hand, Benfold leaped out of the crater and hurled himself against the onrushing hostile soldiers, pushing the grenades against their chest and killing both the attackers. He was posthumously awarded the Purple Heart and Medal of Honor. And now let's go to Relinda for a quick weather update.
Hello everyone. Uh, weather conditions in Palau and in the surrounding region has been unpredictable within the last few weeks. At one moment, uh, it's sunny and nice outside. In the next moment, it's raining heavily. As you can see right now, it's very gloomy outside. To find out what's going on with our weather system, we spoke to Maria Ngamais from the Weather Bureau here in Palau. El alta ma rainy season in Palau. Sel me mo September ang rainy season. Sel te me laul. Um, seen the lomo larwa tropical cyclone and goteng disturbance, uh, mo depression, a tropical storm, and then typhoon. Gadam lara la nina, el temela ul, ma ulang mal clo ul el angaling. Matagi del gora la nina, el neutral el gamutmura, a madrid el nino, em la mo start el di ulla bekal every week, ma ulang dingari arwa. Uh, generate our uh, uh, tropical cyclone rabitara rug e meleng ala rabitara gide pai mororoi de mangal mo moklo mo morira wa morasia bal ma moroles most likely ndi bul ol pasra northern vela of the galbel affect gide ndi gide mo receive a lot of rain ndi so galo isra adra blu la sel bol temela ul e nya motel gibel mese sayol ta especially sel club se mar adra gal west blu et bul ol gol rawe de lo se ngara ngari mengari ayol tel med alu bendi ka ngara ngandi club se mar adra gal west blu to mo mo gol loger e sel bol ul e nya mo se sayol telen ngi gal ul le lo du bertial pressure atmosphere el medium ul mo se sayol teng ngi de ngarang so maybe you should always keep an umbrella possibly a raincoat and even rain boots in your car in case it rains heavily and also probably a candle in the house in case uh, weather conditions disrupt uh, power temporarily this is Rolinda Jonathan for OTV News and there is your quick weather report Thank you, Ro. And now here's Mike for Micro Sports. <laughs> Which camera am I looking at? Sulange Blair. The Westmoreland Gazette, located in Kendall in the United Kingdom, ran a special feature on Oceania judokas training in their hometown. Judo stars from Samoa, American Samoa, Papua New Guinea, Guam, Solomon Islands, Palau and Vanuatu have been training at the Kendall Dojo before they transfer to their final base camp at the Olympic Village. And lo and behold, featured in the article is Palau's own Jennifer Anson and her coach, Regan Bellel. Jennifer was quoted as saying, I'm feeling nervous and it's quite overwhelming when you think about it, adding, but it's obviously great to be representing my country and I feel very blessed and excited to have made it to the Olympics. The Olympians have been training with each other and other local judokas and of, uh, as evidenced here by Solomon Islands Olympian Tony Lomo throwing Guam heavyweight Rick Bloss, which does not look like an easy feat. <laughs> and apparently Tony's just throwing everyone around, including Samoa's Alenia Smith. No news if he's sparred with Jennifer yet, but after going toe-to-toe -to -toe with her myself, my money's on Jen. <laughs> Papua New Guinea's Dika Toa and Stephen Kari are among 10 weightlifters from the Oceania Weightlifting Institute in Nomea, New Caledonia, that have qualified for the Olympics in London. Coach Paul Kofa said it was a record number from the Institute that will be traveling to London, featuring weightlifters from the Federated States of Micronesia, Fiji, Nauru, Kiribati, PNG, Palau, Tuvalu, and the Solomon Islands. Palau's own Stevik Patrice is currently training in Nomea before he joins the rest of his athletes in London. There are six other weightlifters from Oceania, with two from Samoa, two from Australia, and one from the Cook Islands and New Zealand. The Oceania Weightlifting Institute was founded in April 2002 with the concept of having an institute run in the Pacific to provide island lifters with proper facilities and a high level of training. OTV is proud to welcome one of our new allies over in London, the Reporters Academy International. TRA is a media company that is run by young people providing content for young people. They have partnered with the Oceania National Olympic Committees and the Pacific Islands News Association to provide official content before, during, and after the London 2012 Games. Here's a report from their London-based office with Oceania Athletes Encounter with the Olympic Torch. <laughs> It's awesome and nice, amazing. I love it. It's look very, uh, it's look good and my first experience. And I saw the thoughts and I really want to uh, 
to touch the toads and run at the toads. It was very exciting because I'm part of that as well. In the next few weeks, I'm going to be seeing more of the toad. Like you live your dreams and yeah, let's represent the toad. Our training starts on Monday. We just arrived. But oh, it's the, the welcoming and the, the hospitality is awesome. Training is good and all, all things are good in here. It's good to be here and be part of the celebration and to celebrate all kinds of sports. I stay here for one month. Uh, training, uh, speed, just uh, speed, and yeah. For the competitors, I mean, they're hoping to pick up the new uh, sports science and all things, how to train, how to do the fitness things, and just to get the, the expanded knowledge. Yeah, that's why I'm trying because this is my, my first time for the to the Olympics, so I'm just trying to get some medals or yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to, to try and move our, uh, especially for Taekwondo, try and make a name for ourselves. We're hoping to improve archery and uh, to see and fellowship with other people around the world and to get more experience and uh, to learn and uh, there's so much to learn from. So uh, I'll look for us to the Ol London Olympics as the next month. I'm just a little bit nervous. Stay tuned to OTV for much more in-depth coverage of Oceania athletes provided by our friends at TRA. Speaking of the Olympic torch, our own local torchbearer, Jack Uri Jr., returned to Palau last week more than a little jet lagged, but still excited from his recent adventure in London. We caught up with Jack to find out how it went in London. The security guard would put like A, B, C, D, and all the way to J. And the first one's A, so I just like close my eyes and somehow just pretend I'm doing a magic trick. And I just uh, pulled one out at random and it was A, so I was like the first one to hold the torch. So I get to lit the torch and they call it the torch kiss. And then we started. All of, there were two groups, 10 on one group and 10 on the other group. So the 10 of us ran together, 60 meters, we passed it to one another until we complete our run and then we pass it to the next one, the flame. How cool was that, man? Yeah, I mean, it was really cool get to be the first one and to kiss and then run with it for 60 meters, waving at the crowd. But when we were done, we were all like, man, that was so fast. <laughs> it's like, what happened? <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Athletics Fiji has announced that United States-based runner Danny Alakija will represent Fiji at the 2012 Olympic Games in London. Alakija's times of 55 and 24.32 seconds in the 400 meters and 200 meters respectively ranks her in the top 50 in USA for the under-20 age category and her qualification on merit for the IAAF World Junior Championships ranks her among the best in the world. Having just turned 16 last month, she is also going to be the youngest athlete at the London Olympics and is already being interviewed by the BBC for a documentary on her successes at such a young age. And Tahiti's shocking first place finish at the Oceania Nations Cup is still reverberating through the international football community as evidenced by FIFA's recent rankings. The FIFA World Ranking has Tahiti listed at 138th, jumping 41 places since the latest release. This is Tahiti's highest ranking since 2002 when they ranked 111th. New Zealand didn't suffer too much from their third place finish at the Nations Cup, managing to still move up five spots to rank 95th overall. And New Caledonia, the team that knocked New Zealand out of the OFC tournament, moved up 12 spots to rank 142nd. And that'll do it for this week's Micro Sports. And that's all the news that we have for this week. Thank you for joining us. I'm Blair Phillips, signing off.